Hey, how's it going? Wanted to do a little video on how I'm cutting these, uh, I don't know what you'd call them, stringers. Um, long, giant, basically shims uh, to raise the floor. So obviously, you know, I've kind of explained on how to mark the position using a laser, uh, put it in the, I've attached it obviously with a whole bunch of screws to get it out nice and flush. And then uh, draw my laser line, put some little tick marks on it, and then I'm gonna go cut it. Uh, incidentally, I went ahead and marked on the floor with chalk wherever I have electrical lines just to help myself out as I go along, just so I don't forget uh, not to screw into that point. One thing to mention on this uh, impact driver, if you're gonna get an impact driver like this, you're definitely gonna want two batteries uh, because I've been going through the batteries pretty quick. So here's how I'm cutting the uh, long strips of wood. Um, this is a track saw. And basically what you do is, uh, and I'll try to show you here, there's one of those little wood uh, tick marks that I mark with a laser. This is just the end piece of wood. The piece that's underneath this is the part that I don't want to cut. So that's actually the finished piece. All this is gonna be scrap or reused in a different section. So when you put your track saw on here, basically the tick mark will remain, everything below it will, will still be there, but the kerf is gonna remove some material on the upper side. So be really conscious, cognizant, I guess, when you do that, that you account for that kerf, because otherwise your cuts will end up, end up short. Uh, so uh, I, I personally just put it onto this um, insulation, it's kind of like a cutting board. And then uh, I throw my two by four on here. I've got a ripping blade. Uh, which is a little different than the blade that it comes with. Uh, it's got a, uh, less teeth, so it's meant to rip. And then uh, got my dust back, everything hooked up, and I'm gonna try to do this. So I'll try to cut it one-handed here, show you what it looks like once we cut it here. So cautious, loud noises here. So this is the piece we're not gonna use. And that's what I was talking about. This is the piece we are gonna use. And you can see the tick marks right on the line there. There's another tick mark. Let's see if I can show you right there. So this little sliver that little sliver is the end of this board. And if you take a look here, you'll see that the laser is just about on it. I might be a little tiny bit off. Uh, by the time it's screwed down, that'll help. You'll see if you push it down, there it is on the line. Um, if I need to, over there I've got a planer. And I, it's a little easier just to plane off a little tiny bit of material than end up short and have to shim it up. Uh, that's what I found. Basically, that's how you create these long, thin pieces of wood. Um, I have no idea how you do this using a table saw. Um, I wouldn't want to do this with a table saw. So uh, the track saw makes it a lot easier to do these weird cuts. Table saw is better for like nice square thin pieces if you're like trying to rip a whole bunch of, you know, thin consistent pieces of wood. This is more unique. Um, it's a lot easier with the track saw. So hope this helps someone kind of show you how I'm doing this and I'm just gonna keep going. And like I said, in the end, uh, if you need to fix it a little bit, this particular planer, this is actually pretty cheap. Uh, I bought this planer here. It's a Bosch PL 1632. I saw it on a YouTube channel of Acorn Arabella shipbuilding guys. That one, if anybody has Festool stuff, 
just so you know, planers make a ton of sawdust. Let me just show you this. This is the nicest part. This perfectly fits into there. So you can use your dust extraction with this particular planer. Works great. And you could just shave off a little bit to get right down to the mark. All right, I'll keep going and post a video once we're ready to set down some of the uh, OSB floor.